We recently changed the set design at our church, and if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a couple of pics when all was said and done, along with some Instagram stories behind the scenes throughout the building process. And many of you commented that you wanted to see more about how we created this and how we designed our new stage design. So I want to take a couple of minutes and talk through the entire process and maybe some of the whys, why we made some of the decisions that we did, and if we had to do it all over again, what we might do differently. Hi, I'm Dave Dolphin at practicalworshipblog.com sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. On this channel, we have weekly videos that help you lead a worship band and be a leader of people. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. So the idea started at a website called churchstagedesignideas.com. This is a great resource of ideas that people submit, and there's always a ton of details about how they built it, where they ordered stuff, and things like that. I found this design called the Big Baller. Essentially, it's several long panels painted black with white styrofoam balls in a grid pattern, and then you light them with colored lights to get this effect. It almost looks like an LED wall. Now, all of these panels are the same length, four feet by 16 feet, but I found another version of this idea on the website that looked like this. They varied the length of each panel, creating this cool arc design. Same width, they're about four feet wide, but the outside panels are eight feet, then 12 feet, and then the inside panels are 16 feet. Now, in both of these cases, they used foam board that you would buy at Home Depot or Lowe's and then hung the panels from the top of the stage. But because of how our building is structured and because we have this baptism area, we don't have the option to really fly anything. So we decided to use plywood and then mount them to the stage floor. In the theater world, we built what they would call a flat. Using quarter inch sheets of four by eight plywood or what they would call Luon, we built frames like if you were building the backdrop for a stage production. The sheets of Luon are supported with these one by fours and then there's these pieces that support the corners, which are just scraps of plywood cut into triangles. And this keeps the panels still pretty lightweight even if we're using wood instead of foam. The flats took us about a week to finish and then they were ready for paint by the end of the week. Now, when you're building anything for the stage, you want to use a flat black paint. You don't want any kind of sheen or gloss because essentially you want the black to be invisible. And now it's time for the styrofoam balls, actually half balls. This is what they look like. They're made out of this firm styrofoam and we bought them in this mold, in this shape, all 960 of them. We recruited a team of volunteers to help us glue the styrofoam balls to the flats. We canceled the midweek rehearsal for the band and we just met during that time since all of us on the worship team already have Wednesday nights carved out on our schedules. Now to get the balls into a straight grid pattern, I know of a lot of churches that did this before us, they use chalk, the kind of chalk that you can wipe away when you're done. And that seemed like a lot of prep work. And so we opted instead to make these templates out of cardboard. And they worked okay, except it took a long time for people to get the finesse of it. And people's lines would start kind of moving like this and we'd have to move the balls over and make adjustments. But we were using liquid nails to secure the styrofoam to the wood, which gives us about 15 minutes to work with it before it dries completely. We just always had one person walking around providing quality control while the teams of people did the assembly. About two hours later, we were done, which concluded week two of the build, but it would still be another week before we unveiled the design to the church because we still had to build the supports. Each flat sits on this very thick piece of two by six, and then we run a pair of two by fours vertically. The flats are screwed into the two by fours, the two by fours are screwed into the two by six, and the two by six is screwed into the stage. And for the eight foot flats, that was enough. For our 10 foot panels, we actually added this 45 degree brace. And then for the 12 foot panels, we secured those to the old set design, which is this Joanna and Chip Gaines inspired shiplap wall, because this stage design wall is actually secured to the building structure itself. We just removed a few slats to get access to the frame. This curtain is also new. Now this is just a cheap black 
tablecloth, and then we cut holes across the short side of each tablecloth about one foot apart and hung them on this curtain rod because in order for this design to work visually, you don't want to see any of the background. You just want to see grids of colored dots and a sea of black. So this is what the final design looks like. It's clean, it's modern, but we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from our church members of all generations, which has been really encouraging. If I had to do it all over again, I wish we would have purchased slightly smaller styrofoam balls because we didn't make our panels as tall as some of the other examples that we saw on the Church Stage Design Ideas website, and our auditorium might be a bit smaller than some of theirs. If you're up close, in the first few rows, I think proportionally the dots are a little bit too big. But overall, I think it turned out great and it's a huge win for the team. And if you want more information about maybe where some of those original blog posts from that website are or where you can purchase these styrofoam balls, all that information plus more, I'm gonna link it in the description down below. For more videos just like this one, consider subscribing to the channel and for more practical advice from me personally, there's a small little ebook called 20 Things I Wish I Knew 20 Years Ago. It's the advice that I've learned over the last 20 years of doing music ministry, and you can download it right now for free at practicalworshiplog.com.